All right, the first thing I'd like everybody to do before we actually get into the material is to please take out a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper to write on, open a notebook, uh, uh, your computer, your smartphones. I just want you to make a list, okay? And what I would want, like you to do on this list is to write down everything that's on your mind right now. I'm not going to ask you to share any of the things you put on the list with anybody in the room. So this is only for you, and I only want you to spend one minute doing it. So everything that's on your mind, the emails you have to send to people later, the fill up the call with gas, pick up the cleaning, whatever it is you have to do or you have on your mind, please just write it down now. 60 seconds, go.
understand a little bit of the science behind how to come up with your own wow statements. Okay? And we're going to work on it here. This is not going to be you sitting listening to this guy from Silicon Valley talk all afternoon. We're going to break into teams very quickly, and you're going to come up with your own wow statements. But first, let me give you a little bit of the science. Okay. First of all, every entrepreneur I've met, no matter where I go in the world, they all believe they have a big idea. And I believe every entrepreneur I meet, no matter what I personally think, has a big idea. I mean, I'm just one person. I don't judge. I think everything's a good idea because I'm your cheerleader. I want to see you get somewhere with whatever your idea is for a product, a service, a company, or what have you. But the problem that is facing all people out there is converting your big idea that's stuck in your brain into words that will engage an audience, whether it's an investor, whether it's a customer, a prospect, a strategic alliance you're trying to make, a partnership you're trying to make. You need something you can say in those first few seconds, or the first 30 seconds, or a minute, that will get them to say, wow, I'd like to know more. So for example, there's a company out there called Hydrovolts, and they make something that well, let me go back and tell you the, the real story. So at IBM Smart Camp Finals in San Francisco, they go around the world, and they find companies that are going to change the world, and then they narrow it down to 10 companies who each get five minutes to present. This, there were like 12 companies, I'm sorry, uh, 10 companies. The seventh company that got up said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to be here with you today because we make a machine that turns water into money. And normally people laugh when I say that. The entire audience went, ha, 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 at least there. Uh, and in fact, he does make a machine that turns water into money. This is it. It's a machine about so big, it's got some turbines on the outside edges and flappers on the middle. A couple of cords hold it off to the side. You throw it into a waterway with the water moving. It starts flipping. The paddles and it generates free electricity. You plug your cord into the grid and now you have free electricity. So does he turn water into money? Yes. It's a metaphor, right? But it's one that you say, wow, or really, right, how are you going to do that? We make software that turns data into money. Do all of you make, I mean, some of you make software. Do you make hardware that turns something into money? Maybe you can use these things too. He doesn't have the corner on the term on that sentence. You just can replace words in there that maybe apply to you. Okay, so the metaphor, that first thing you say to somebody where they say, I'd like to know more. I have a friend uh, from Australia, and anytime he meets somebody, he says, Hi, I'm Sydney from Sydney. <laughs> and he is. His name is Sydney, and he's from Sydney, Australia. So that's his wow statement. It has nothing to do with his product but it has a way to break the ice with anyone he meets. And he's this little guy about so tall, and he looks up to him with a big grin on his face, hi, I'm Sydney from Sydney, who are you? And he's one of the most popular guys at any networking event. Because he's Sydney from Sydney. Have you met Sydney from Sydney? I want you to meet Sydney from Sydney. And it's funny to just listen to people talk about it. So every one of you can have a wow statement for yourself. And you need wow statements. Not one, but maybe two, maybe even three. Because one wow statement may work 80% of the time. But what if you hop on a plane and you go to Moscow and you try that wow, that wow statement there and it's not working? Because it worked here, but it's not working there. So you can go to your second one that you already have ready to go, tested, marked, and, and you've tested the whole use of it. And if that one doesn't work, then you can go to the third one. But just having one wow statement is not the end of the game. You need more. Okay. So in coming up with your wow statements, I want to just give you a little bit of the science behind how to break through people's preoccupation with the things that they have going on in their heads, which are usually a lot more important than what you're about to tell them. And it all started a long time ago when I found this book called The, Power, the Magic Power of Emotional Appeal. It was written in 1960, and it still applies today. Unfortunately, it's out of print. But I'm going to summarize the book for you here in five minutes and give you what I believe is the secret to getting into someone's head and staying there. 
Wouldn't that be great if your idea could get into someone's head and stay there? Because if you don't want to know that, then we can end early. Let them know that. All right. So this holds true because we, the way we think, the way we process information hasn't really changed that much in all the years we've been communicating. So what this book did is it made me understand that advertisers know something that we don't know. And you can use what this book told tells advertisers about how to get into our heads. And the first thing you have to understand is that everyone is preoccupied. Just accept the fact that everyone you meet is preoccupied with something else, something more important on their minds than what you are talking about. Even in a networking event, somebody walks in, there's something else on their mind. So you as the communicator need to do something to break through that preoccupation. And this is the book that taught me how to do it when I was 17 years old, and I've been using it ever since. The number one way to break through anyone's preoccupation in life is to talk about money. Now, this may be an obvious one to some of you, but you might forget how motivating money can be, whether you're going to save it, make it, spend it. Is that me? So whenever you have a solution in software or hardware that can re relate to what money to money, that ought to be a central focus about how you're pitching your business, your product, your service, whether it's to an investor or a customer. Money drives people to make decisions, and that may be an obvious one, but realize that it's a really big one when it comes to getting people's brains engaged. That's number one. Number two, and there are four of them. Number two is future promise. The idea that if I use your product or service or I work with you, something's going to be better in my future. The future promise will drive people to make decisions that are based on the heart, not the mind. When you tell somebody about something they'll experience in the future, you're getting them to think about something that's a better picture than what they have today, and it will stay inside their mind. Romance is another one, but that doesn't come into play too often in technical environments, unless you're doing a dating site or a pornographic site, which we're really not here to talk about. And then, of course, the advertisers all know that beautiful bodies, whether they're men or women, will attract your attention. Sex, beautiful, you know, it does it. So, but it, in technology, I try to get you to focus on future promise as something that can drive people and break through the preoccupation. Did you know that using our system in less than 30 days, you will you go, oh, 30 days from now, you've seen something in the future. Number three, I think I may be walking in, some, in front of something here possibly. No? Okay. Number three is recognition. When people will get recognition from something you're providing them with, or you recognize them for something that they've done, or they're doing, or planning to do, you break through the preoccupation. For example, David, where's David? David, you're amazing. I want to thank you so much for making this trip absolutely the simplest trip out of all of the 18 days or 17 days to this. He took care of my taxi. He made sure I got from Vienna up to here into my hotel. Michaela came over and picked me up. I mean, these guys are the best. If you're not working with them, and you're all, you should. How do you feel, David? Did you forget? What were you thinking just before that? Uh, you have my attention. There we go. <laughs> so recognition. Recognition, you know. It can really be an icebreaker, especially in networking uh, networking situations. You don't want to do the obvious, like, oh, I love you, Jeff. You know, it's like <laughs> something a little more engaging. And then number four is a massively important one, and that is when you talk about self-preservation, safety, or security, you will break through whatever the preoccupation is that, that's in people's minds. So I know there's some people in the room that are planning to go to California soon, right? And you're going to spend about four weeks there, that's the case. So I want to scare the pants off of you right now. When you come out to California, you must understand that this is major earthquake country. I am serious, major earthquakes. And we haven't had one since 1989. <laughs> we are due for one in a moment. And it's 2012. They're not predictable. They can happen at any moment. And if you're not prepared, you may not survive. <laughs> now, I'm here to talk to you about a way you can prepare. You take a breath now. 
So do you see how quickly you can get somebody to forget about whatever they're thinking about, thinking about their safety, security, self-preservation? When you come to California and I use this, it means a lot more, by the way, because you're actually sitting on the faults. I imagine right underneath you is one of the largest faults we have in California. And they go, Ooh. So use these things as a way to break through the preoccupation that we all have in our minds at any point in the day. You can use it in the morning, at lunch, in the evening. It works any time. But these are the four emotional appeals that every advertiser uses when they want to get through to you. So here's the airline magazine uh, from, uh, I don't know, whatever. Okay, front cover. It says, uh, his moment. So which of these emotional appeals does that speak to? His moment. Right? Right there. So recognition. Uh, I bet he loved being on the front cover. Okay, here's an advertisement for Bose. You'll love what you hear and what you won't. Now remember, it's not just maybe one of these. It could be a combination of more than one. And when you're talking to people, whether it's investors, customers, or just everyday life, you can use any combination. Uh, is there somebody back there on the thinking of knocking by the way? Anyway, you can use any of these in any combination to get people to really stop whatever they're thinking and think about what you want to tell them. But it's your responsibility to do that. And sometimes people get lucky. They say things that get people excited because they come up with some good sayings. But now, with this, you now know a little bit more about now how to think about coming up with those statements that you want to use to get people's attention, those wow statements. Okay? And that's it. That's it. Now the hard part happens. Now we need you to figure out what your wow statements are. So before I break you into teams to help you come up with your own wow statements, I want to give you a couple of ways that you can help connect the left brain and the right brain together. Because the right brain probably is maybe a little bit weak right now in terms of what we're doing here. This has been primarily a left brain presentation. And now I need to get your right brain engaged. So in order to come up with wow statements that will help you communicate the value of what you're doing you can use things like iStock Photo or Getty Images to search on pictures. You can go to Google too, but Getty Images is the number one stock photo house on the net today, which has just gazillions of photos. So tell me, what is your business in three words, please? Oncology. Oncology Diagnostics. Okay, so let's say you're looking for a metaphor for describing some very complex technology or a simile or an analogy for what you're doing. All you need to do is go to Getty Images and search on Oncology Diagnostics. See what you get. Don't look at the first couple of pages because those are going to be very literal. You want to go to the future pages where people have tagged pages with terms that match what you're searching for and you look at it and you go, what? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. The picture of the antenna on the building is no different than the da, 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 in the DNA thing that you talk. Oh, I could use the antennas around the world as my metaphor. So just as you see an antenna on a hill, that's us when we put the thing into the body and then we do this and that. The antenna tells exactly what's going on. That's it. We got it. We're like the antennas on every hill around the world. I'm making it up, obviously. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is you need a little bit of help on the right side of your head to help with the creativity. So I know we have uh, internet access here if you want, so you can get onto any of these uh, places and go search for pictures. But here's what I'd like to do. Uh, I would like to, for maybe 15, 20 minutes, I would like to have you break into teams of four. I do not want you to team up with people you came with. You didn't realize what was going to happen here. <laughs> it's really important that you don't team up with people you came with because you all know too much about what you came here with. I want you to talk to people who you haven't talked to before. I want you to be able to tell something you didn't come with anybody. I want you to be able to tell this gentleman what you did in a way that he's never heard before. And then between you, between the groups, 
share the love, give everybody a little bit of time, and help each other, like, you tell me what you do. And then the other three guys say, oh, well, I, I don't know, this, this sounds like it's this, or it's some, is it like that? The whole point is that you don't want to tell people in that wow statement what you do. Exactly. It's sort of a, a tease. So we're going to break into groups of four. If there's any odd people out, we'll, I'll join the group. And then we'll spend 20 minutes talking amongst yourselves, try to maybe spend five minutes on each person. How about that? Five minutes on each person. One person being the timer. And that will keep things moving. And when we're done with that 20 minutes, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to randomly pick you. Or maybe I'll get David to randomly pick you. <laughs> then you can be a bad guy. No. Well, or we'll get volunteers first. Here's how it'll work. I'll get volunteers first. If we don't get enough, then I'll pick you. Okay? Today is a laboratory environment. It's safe. We're not here to judge each other. We're here to help each other, okay? That's why I'm here, to help you. And with all these brilliant minds in the room, we can all help whoever comes up here to get coaching. So I want to do some live coaching. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get to every one of you. But I'll pick you. For example, we'll come up here and say, okay, tell the audience how you would create that wow statement. And if you didn't have one, well, then we'll maybe help you for a couple minutes to try to come up with one. But actually, if you don't have one, then we'll pick somebody else, because we don't have enough time, okay? But that doesn't mean you shouldn't come up with one, okay? So at least one person in each of these groups should come up with one. Okay, but I know you can do more than that. Any questions? All right, so we're going to break up into teams of four. Pick whoever you want. Don't feel like, you know, if you haven't been picked, you know, you're the last guy who's been picked for the team. Don't feel like that. Just go meet people. I mean, I could do it this way if you want. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All the ones go there, twos go there, three go there, four go. Want to do that? Yeah. Great. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. But it's really important that you remember your number. Because <laughs> if I, I've done this before and people say, what was my number? I have no clue. Ready? Okay. Now, by the way, you can all stay in here or you can go off in the hallways. It doesn't matter. Standing works well to get the body going as well. Do you know how many groups? No. So first thing oh. to find out yeah, the Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I don't want to mess this <laughs> up. Never mind. All right, so we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Are you going to play? 16, 18, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 32, 34, 36, 38. 40 people. All right, 10 groups of four. 10 groups of four. Ready? So your number is going to be what? 2, all the way to 10. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three, four. Do you want to play? Sure. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're scared? <laughs> <laughs> They're leaving before we start. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Okay. <laughs> right. Ten. 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 Thank you very much for participating in that. It was great to see everybody talking. Even though I didn't understand what some of you were saying, I, I could tell that you were engaged. Did you enjoy that exercise? I hope a lot. That was only five minutes. Can you imagine what you can do in like an hour? So you can do that on your own, of course, and continue it with the people that you work with. Actually, it's best if you do it with the people you work with and also the people that you don't work with. Because you get multiple points of view. And, and as you were just saying a moment ago, it was great for our, our biotech guy here to be able to talk with other people and get a different point of view, not only from what he's saying, but listening to what they say, understanding how difficult it can be to describe what you do in a way that creates that wow without taking too long before you get bored and you start looking around for going somewhere else. Okay, so we have until 4 o'clock here today. And the last topic I do want to uh, talk to you about after we get some people to come up here is how to tell uh, visual stories about what you're doing, whether it's to an investor or a customer. And I think when I show you some of these things about telling a visual story, you're going to say, well, of course, I can do that. But before we go there, though, I'd like to see, are there any volunteers who want to come up? Right. Why don't you come up here? Come on up. I'm going to ask you to tell us if you would before. Before this experience, how did you describe what you did? Or, and, and then tell us what you would say now. Okay. Okay, so before today, 
I was talking a little bit like that. Um, hello, we are about the company. We do uh, oncology diagnostics. So we have a very promising biomarker, etc., etc. Okay, and then we start talking about how do you use the biomarker? As after today, I will probably start. Hi, I'm the cancer of your cancer. Whoa! <laughs> But what we were uh, also using before is that we are building a product which would give participants an interactive guide and organizers of business intelligence into what they are uh, doing on the conference. So our like short uh, sentence would be, we are the missing puzzle of an amazing conference. Okay. The missing puzzle or missing puzzle puzzles. Puzzles. Puzzle piece? Puzzle piece. Puzzle piece. That's a different thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Saying you're a, the missing puzzle, there's a lot of pieces. Uh -huh. But if you're the missing piece, that's a different message, right? So missing piece. So could you say it again with the missing piece? Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. So we're the missing piece of an amazing conference. Piece of puzzle. Piece of puzzle. We're the missing piece of puzzle of an amazing conference. Too long. No, 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 no. You just have to puzzle. say it so we can understand. Okay, so we are the missing piece of puzzle of an amazing conference. Yeah. The missing piece of a puzzle for an amazing conference. Okay. But they don't Miss need the puzzle there. They just need the we're the missing piece on a conference. Piece of what? Yeah, That's right. So, Toy with it. Toy with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is not about me. It's more about you guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I'm just starting a company that will focus on innovation management and uh, product design, innovation, and stuff like that. And I was thinking about something like rewriting your, the rules of your game, whatever your game is. Ooh. Rewriting your rules of your game, whatever your game is. Uh, or not. Okay, well, that's okay. okay. Uh, I wanted to use whatever industry you're in or something like that, but it doesn't really fit. Not at all. Oh, good job. Oh. Okay, Thank you. excellent. 
deal with that stuff. We have time for a few more. Thanks. Uh, I'm Brent from Translate Karate. Um, my previous speech was that we help uh, to, to localize your software project, uh, to translate your software project. And uh, after this session, uh, we change it to uh, we help uh, your uh, coders not to get crazy. We help your coders to not go crazy. Yeah, when translating the project. Oh, there you go. No. <laughs> okay. All right. We help your coders to not go crazy when they're coding, when they're uh, translating the software project. What about we are teaching your software our languages, our other, other languages or something like that? Okay, like okay. teaching. <laughs> huh? so we teach you your software a new language. Okay. We let your software speak a new language and want okay. to This is good. Thank you. Thank you. U.S. dollars that we've saved on PR firms so far. Do we want to save any more money? Everybody has gone who wants to go. There is still that number one fear of public speaking in a lot of people's lives, which is okay. You'll learn about that tonight if you come. All right. Congratulations. Fantastic. Please give yourselves a really good round of So that's one of many, many types of exercises that are uh, able to be done in generating that kind of energy and results. What I'd like to finish up with here today, though, is a topic that many of you know about. You see it every day. You hear about it. You may even look at them yourselves, but yet you don't realize how, how powerful they are in raising the awareness of what you're doing to an investor or a customer or a prospect. And that is... Video. Video. Every one of you need a video. It needs to be no more than three minutes, preferably two minutes. Even better, one minute. <laughs> 30 seconds, okay, if you're going to do a 30 second video, what you're doing to captivate someone's attention, to create them to go click to see more, you need to be a Hollywood executive producer, okay, because these, guys, these people are paid hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to write 30 second commercials that wow the pants off of us and make us go do things. Okay, so I don't like to challenge us to the one to the 30 second commercial. I just think that's way too too hard. You can do it in 30 seconds. You know, I'd love to see it, but you, I want to give you a minute, a minute, because a minute is two commercials. Sorry, two commercials. All right. Two minutes is four 30 second commercials. And if you think you need more than four 30 second commercials to get somebody to take action, you are sadly mistaken. Okay. If you think, I, I can't do it in two, well then go get somebody else to help you because you should be able to do it in less than three. I'll give you two, three. More than that, you just go to another video. You just don't watch it anymore. Unless there is sex, drugs, rock and roll, and all that kind of stuff going on in there. But that's not what we're here for. So what I would like to do is play for you uh, the audio of this. Should I try it? Yes. Let's see, just to test. I want to show you, to begin with, a video that was made for Kickstarter. Yeah, I've already plugged in. Should it just work? Okay. So this is a video that was made for Kickstarter. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I know the person that made the video. I don't know the person in the video, but I know the person that made the video. And as you can see here, they were looking for a $10,000 raise, and they raised $52,000. I want to play the video for you. Not I want you to watch with a different eye today. Don't just watch the film. Watch what the guy's doing with the camera. Okay? Because we all carry cameras. You can make your video on this thing, on your smartphone. You may not want to, but you could. The video that you're going to see now was made with a standard digital SLR with 
a number of different lenses. No special lighting, no special anything. Let's see if we get some signal. Pakistan, 
Many of these people are forced to rely on dangerous, toxic, and expensive kerosene lanterns as their primary source of light. In the wake of the Haiti earthquake, Anna and I came to know more about the dangerous and unsafe conditions in the tent cities at night, especially for women and children. Light is a very basic need, and we believe that in addition to food, water, and shelter, that light should be distributed with other relief supplies. Portable, rechargeable lights could have greatly improved living conditions for those living in formal settlements, but there wasn't a product that was designed with this scale of distribution in mind. Most were too expensive and too bulky to distribute in large quantities. Right, so we designed our light to directly address these challenges. The Luminate Solar Light is a solar rechargeable light that is inspired by a few very simple ideas. So for example, for every eight solar flashlights, you can pack and ship over 50 Luminate lights. This saves on shipping and transport emissions. It is also simple and easy to use. You charge it in the sun for four to six hours, and the solar panel charges a rechargeable battery that is connected to super bright LEDs. You inflate the luminate light to diffuse the light like a lantern and reduce the glare of the bright LEDs. You can turn it on to the high setting to read for up to three hours or the low setting for up to six. The luminate light is designed to be waterproof, to float, and to be extremely portable and lightweight. It can also be printed with patterns and photos. We wanted to make a product that was useful in many different contexts and situations. So, the same light that you can use for camping can also be an emergency light in a disaster situation. We've evolved and prototyped the design to reduce the cost, make it brighter, more durable, and easier to use. We hope you'll take a light on your next adventure or trip, find creative ways to use Illuminate, and share the stories and pictures with us. Staying true to the inspiration for the design, we'll send matching lights to our community projects with the lights that we make and produce for you. taking the time to learn more about the Luminate Light. We're excited to share these lights with you as well as with those in need. And with your support, we're really excited to get this off the ground. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So they raised uh, 52000 on a $10,000 goal. Here's the product. It's the coolest thing you've ever seen. You literally do what they saw. You blow it up. Turn it on like that. Two different illuminations in the bag to disperse the, the light. Now I know what you're thinking. Some of you say, oh, you've just shown me two hardware products. It's easy to do a video on a hardware product. All right, let me show you a software product. All right, let's do this one. Uh, no, let's do this one. I know, let's do this one. This is actually more fun. So you've all heard of this company called uh, Dropbox? Yeah. This was one of their first videos. Something like a wow. It's Dropbox. They had no money. <laughs> so SmugMug is a premium photo sharing offering, uh, just like there's first class an airline or BMW or Toyota in the car industry. Uh, we thought there was a market for premium photo sharing, photo sharing done right, no ads, big beautiful photos, where your photos look better than anywhere else on the web. Turns out we were right. We charge a yearly subscription fee. There are no free accounts, and we have hundreds of thousands of paying customers. We're profitable, bootstrapped, and growing fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, let me show you a better one. Okay, here's one. This is animation. A little bit more expensive, but they had a. a this is just one of those kind of. On State.com, you can create your own personal travel guide for free. Start by picking a destination. Let's say you want to find a place to stay. Check out the hotel. Read guests' reviews. Add it to your guide. Okay. It's buffering probably. Buffers. And if you like it, book it. Hungry? On Stay.com you'll find all kinds of restaurants. Check out our recommendations or add your own favorites. And now it's time to share the fun. 
You can get suggestions from everyone, the people you're traveling with, family and friends. That way you can discover the hidden gems only a few people... All right, forget that one. It's boring. But you get the idea. There you, this is a fairly complex... This is the other end of the spectrum where they actually hired somebody to come in and they did the, the, what they call green screening, where there's a green screen on the table and they're doing this and then they match that with the actual graphics later on. So I know for a fact that that, that, that uh, video it costs them nearly $20,000. So you can go watch it later on if you want to see something. Maybe not. Maybe. Never mind. The one I wanted to really show you is this one. Been a lot of fun shooting this crazy action movie. Now we're gonna sit down using Wii Videos Plus. Okay, we're not gonna watch that. This is positive. Just pause it for a while and then I'll buffer. Just wait a minute. Just open it. It's slow on the internet. While we're watching. Oh, while we're waiting. The video that is playing right now is talking about software that all of you need to know about. Now I know that many of you don't have probably video editing skills. However, the software is in the cloud that you can use right now. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It's video editing in the cloud, rendering in the cloud as high as 1080p in your browser. Not bad, huh? And this is a company called We Video. And they just raised $19.2 million from a couple of investors in Plano, Texas. YouTube. All you need to start is a YouTube account. Go to youtube.com slash create and pick the Wii Video Editor. Everything happens inside the browser, so you can do it on any computer. From here you can upload all your footage, and Wii Video handles all the compression, storage, rendering, everything. The app has all the stuff you'd expect to find in an editing program. You've got your timeline, your preview window, media library. You just grab your footage, and drop it onto the timeline, where you can trim it down and shift it around. Wii Video has a ton of built-in effects that you can apply to your clips, like color correction, dozens of transitions, you just drag and drop, and they play back instantly with no delay. The Video Wizard feature lets you take a bunch of still images or video clips and applies the transitions automatically to create a slideshow. And there's also a title editor that lets you add text anywhere. There's a whole library of built-in sound effects and music to pull from to spice up your project. You can even record your own voice with your computer's built-in mic to do narration like I'm doing right now. Once you're finished, just hit publish, and the video goes live on your YouTube account. Everything is already uploaded, so you can publish to YouTube in one click. Now Wii Video also has a standalone cloud-based editor, even more features, that lets you collaborate with your friends and family. They can upload footage for you to edit into your videos, or you can even share your entire project with them so they can open it up and see exactly what you're working on. So sign in with your YouTube account Visit youtube.com slash create and check out what it's like to edit in the cloud. How about that? So if you have no excuse to not create video for your companies these days, whether it's a customer video, an investor video, a prospect video, a video to the one person, the CEO that you're trying to get to in a particular company, write him or her a two-line email with a link to a video that you created specially for them. Who knows? But with a product like that, is really no excuse to not make your own videos anymore. Okay, so there was no talking head here. You didn't see the person talking, so that's yet another way. You can have just the voiceover and just a bunch of pictures, or in this case, the software being shown. When you saw those pictures just by themselves, just still pictures, you can make an entire video of just still pictures. And then you use what's called the Ken Burns effect, where it slowly zooms in or slowly zooms out. That's called the Ken Burns effect. And that's part of, that's one of the features in uh, one of these menus right here. And you decide where, how you want to zoom, how, where you want to go in or out, and how much time. So videos are really one of the most effective ways that you can get your message into the mind 
of your listener, whether customer, prospect, investor. Better yet, people will pass off the link to your video more fast, more quickly than they might pass off the link to your website or some PDF document. Okay, the music. Pick some good music, upload your own music, whatever you want to do. How many of you are more excited about making a video now than you were before you came here today? I'm just curious. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, um, hmm. 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 let's see. What else do we have in store for you, Jerry? Let's go over here. Uh, okay. So, oh, yes. Let me show you this. So if you do create a video on your own and you don't want to do your own voiceover, you can go to this little uh, website called Voice Bunny. There's probably a few others out there. And then you can pick your language that you want it voiced over in. And you can also pick the accent, the age, the gender. So you can say, I want a female with an Australian accent that's under 30, you know, like between 20 and 30 years old. Or you want like an older person because that's the message you want to put through. So you can use that. There's no excuse for you now not to have the voiceover of your choice in any language you want. Because if I guess if the uh, language isn't covered there, then maybe you can just tell them Nathan said you should edit. These uh, these people announced at demo two year, uh, year and a half ago. So that's a cool resource for you. Uh, I think that pretty much covers the resources that I have. Any questions on uh, visual storytelling? Ask away. Why to do a video? Why to do a video? Because people like video. I mean, they just look. We love video. Do you, do you think people have time to watch videos on the internet about unknown stuff? Do you think they have time to read your long emails? To read your executive summaries, to read your business plans. Probably. But, but it's easier to scan text than to scan a video. Uh, for some people, yes, I agree. Listen, all I'm saying is it's not the only way. Okay, don't don't start pinning me down. You have to make a video. Look, this is just another resource to help people really get what you do and the message that you want to get out. And you can't even put your project on Kickstarter or Indiegogo.com, and you will be taken seriously if you don't have a video there. I mean, if you don't have a video, then people go elsewhere. When you go to Angel, uh, not Angel, this, yeah, Angel, uh, Angel Soft, and you put in your uh, your application to start finding angels around the United States, or Gust, G U S T. You know what Gust? G U S T. Please jot that down for yourself. G U S T dot com. They are uh, the one place that you can go. At least one of the main places where you can get in touch with angel investors at least, I don't know if they're outside the United States, but they are uh, the, one of the premier websites for hosting your portfolio and attracting angels to find you. And uh, you have to have a video to go up here. If you don't have a video, then people might read what you're saying, but most people are now looking for the video. And with Kickstarter and Indiegogo out there for investment purposes, Everybody's expecting a video. Yes. If what? Yes. Of course, I agree. If you want to do storytelling, the video is truly the best. You can do it in written word, but how many people are going to read all that stuff? Again, this is dependent on the audience that you're trying to get to, but. Video is amazingly powerful. And short, quick, catchy music can make you feel a certain way. I would like to show you actually one more video, if you don't mind, that is more of a metaphor than something that you might say, well, why is he showing us this video? And the reason is because Show you this video. Let's go down. Let's 
Excuse me for just one second here. The reason I want to show you this video is because, oh, I'm sorry, that's not the one I wanted to show you. Everybody saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> you really saw that. But have you seen this guy? <laughs> this one is because I, I know that one of the number one fears in most people's lives is public speaking. And you ought to know that too. Many of you might even have a little fear of public speaking. I want you to see an extreme version of fear of being in the public life. And see what happens in three minutes. And our final contestant, 37-year-old warehouse worker and pizza delivery man Jamie Pugh, might just be the most nervous contestant we've ever had. I suffered from severe stage fright. It's totally just crippled me really. And I've come today and to see if I can get through three minutes. Performing in front of the live audience and the three judges is a world away from Jamie's day-to-day -day life. I feel like this when you're outside the door. I work in the day, three days a week, driving a van, a warehouse, and then in the evenings then, to have a pizza. But it's not what I want. I want to sing. I'm just a simple bloke from the valleys. And my dream is to sing for the Royal Variety with the live orchestra. It's time to see if Jamie can finally conquer his stage fright. <laughs> Too bad, how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. So your name is? Jamie. Jamie. Pim. And what do you do for a living? I drive a van by day and deliver pizza by night. Okay, and why are you here, Jamie? To see if I can sing in front of this lovely audience. And uh, what are you going to do today? I'm going to sing Bring Him Home from Les Miserables. Are you? Well, I'm going to try. Out of interest, have you ever done anything like this where you've sung in an audience like this? or? No. <laughs> You're terrified, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, listen, Jamie, best of luck. Thank you. This is why it's...
does that make you feel? from you. You haven't performed in this kind of arena ever. You, you deliver pizzas at night, for goodness sake, and you come on this stage, one of the biggest talent shows in the world, and you do a performance like that. I thought that was incredible. <laughs> special, special talents. You know what we may have just found one. Well, I would say, you can start yourself a bit, Jamie, because, you know, it was, it's true. Flip it over, 
put it back down on top. Take two thirds of the deck, pick it up, flip it over, put it back on top. Take all the cards that are face up, take them off, flip them back around, put them on the bottom. Take the top card and put it right here for just a moment. <laughs> now I know we have some mathematicians, some statisticians in the room. How many of you would like to tell me what is the probability that we have all just come up with the same card? One, two, one, two, three. No. What do you have? Uh, how many of you have the ace of hearts? I think the general procedure is You didn't do it and you have the ace of hearts? That's called magic. For those of you who don't have the ace of hearts, you're still coachable, but you need extra help. So I'm going to let everybody go uh, with a few minutes extra, and then you guys come on up here and we'll give you a little marble. So you've got to stay for extra help. OK, so that's it. That's it. All of you came up with the ace of hearts. You get a free half hour of coaching from me. You can go to my website, democoach.com. Even if you didn't get the ace, you get a free half hour. And, uh, it's uh, democoach.com, and there is a button on the right side called appointments, and you can click on that appointment button and schedule an appointment with me in your own time zone. Okay, so when you click on that button, you'll see times available in your time zone. And uh, this is how I can make appointments with 50 or 60 people in a week and not have to do any email. I don't do email appointments, I'm telling you that right now. Don't write me an email saying, when can I meet with you on Skype next Tuesday or Wednesday? My life doesn't work like that. You just go to the website, click on the appointments, and you'll see eventually a, uh, a calendar with all the times of the days that you can make an appointment with me. Half hour free, which just gives you a chance to continue where we started here. Anything and everything goes, and uh, eventually it'll be there. Are there any last minute questions? With that, I do want to thank you all very much for taking the time to come listen to me this afternoon. I hope you've learned a few things, and uh, I'm hoping you'll see us tonight, because there's a lot more than what we did here today that I'm going to be talking about tonight. So thank you very much. If you need my business card, just come up here and I'll give it to you.